Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel, Incremental Nova. If you are new here, my name is Navi, and it's lovely to have you. And today, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic coding or programming on your iPad Pro. Ever since I started using my iPad Pro previously 12.9 inch 2018 model and currently this 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch model, I always wanted to use it for doing some programming. Obviously, you won't use your iPad Pro for programming when you have access to your MacBook. For obvious reasons, MacBook is very good for your programming. You can run your code natively on MacBook. You can install any kind of language, any kind of IDE that you want to work with. So basically, MacBook is really good for programming. So the question is, when would you want to use your iPad Pro for programming or coding? The simple answer is when you don't have access to your MacBook, right? Otherwise, you will use your MacBook Pro for programming, as I just mentioned. For those times, I wanted to see if I am able to do that or not. And today, we'll be looking at the ways you can use your iPad Pro for programming and coding on the go when you don't have access to your MacBook or laptop. So other question that would naturally have is why can't you use your iPad Pro as your MacBook for programming or software development? The answer is Apple doesn't let you run your code natively on your iPad or it doesn't give you access to install things and run it natively and give access to its kernel. All the apps and the ways that we will be looking in this series of coding on your iPad Pro or programming on your iPad Pro, all those apps and ways are actually shipping your code out of your iPad and then executing it and then showing you the results. So far, I haven't been able to find an app that is natively running your code or an ID that is natively running your code on iPad. Let's start with most interesting and famous language, which is nowadays being used in data science and data analysis, Python. So to run Python, there is a very good app, which is obviously not free. So all the ways I will present to you guys are totally free. You will not have to buy anything to run your code using those methods. So the way that I'm going to show you is not just running your basic Python programming on your iPad, but you can also use and run advanced data science related code on your iPad using this method. You will be able to use libraries like pandas, numpy, scikit for Python that are really advanced libraries that you normally use for data manipulation, analysis and data science. So with this way, we'll be able to see how we can do that as well. So without wasting any time, let's see the tutorial about that one. I'll show you the architecture, how we can code on Google Cloud. So let's say this is your iPad. So this is nothing but your iPad. So from your iPad, we are going to make a connection to the cloud. So let's imagine this is GCP, which is Google Cloud. In that case, there will be a lot of virtual machines running inside the cloud. Okay. What we are trying to do is we are just going to configure one of them. Okay, so let's remove all these and create our own. So let's say we created one virtual machine, which is named Python demo. You can name it anything. I'll show you the steps how you can name it. For simplicity, let's say it is named Python demo and this is your virtual machine inside the virtual machine while creating or you can do the do this step later on as well but I'll show you while creating this virtual machine how you can load a docker image that will be running docker container and how that docker container will be running Jupyter notebooks so inside that let's imagine that you have a docker container running so this is your docker container 
I'll give you the image name that we will be loading inside this virtual machine Python demo. So in this Docker container, we will be running Jupyter. So Jupyter is the program that will let you run your Python, Java, C++, any kind of code on your iPad. So basically you are just using your iPad to connect to your virtual computer or machine and you will be able to perform all the steps that you can do on your desktop or on your MacBook or your laptop. So I hope this diagram is clear to you. Now let's look at the steps to create a Google account and then perform all these steps of creating a virtual machine, Docker image and then running the Jupyter. And we will also run few Python commands to see how it is actually working. Okay, so first thing that we'll have to do is we will go to browser and we'll type cloud.google.com. You can go to cloud.google.com and create a free account that will be eligible for one year. So let's get started. Okay, as you can see our account is created now. All you have to do here is go to these three lines that you can see on the left hand top side. You'll click on that. You will go to compute engine. Just click on that. So it will take some time to get everything ready in your compute engine. So by that time, let's go to container registry. And in container registry, first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to enable it. So you will go, you will click on enable container registry. It will take few minutes to enable it. Okay. So once it is done, you can see that your container registry is up and running. You can go back to compute engine and see if that is set up for you or not. Okay. So once you have your compute engine enabled, after that, all you have to do is click on this create button. So we are going to create a new virtual machine for us. Virtual machine is like an instance of your computer. Uh, so it is going to be your computer on cloud. You can install Jupyter notebooks on that and use it for running your code. So we are going to create a new virtual machine on Google Cloud. Let's say we want to name it Python dash demo. Okay. And after that, what you have to be careful about is you have to enable this container, click on that and you have to type pupster P U P S T E R nine zero slash I O. So this is the Docker image name for Jupyter notebook and you will click on advanced container options and you will check all these three checkboxes run as privileged, allocate a buffer to STDN and allocate a sudo tty all right once you have done that we are also going to change the boot disk because we are going to increase some memory and i like to use ssd because they are slightly quicker and better performing so we can change it to 25 gb and select once you make that decision you will be able to see that it is updated. Now in uh, identity and API access, you want to allow full access to all cloud APIs. And last thing that you have to do is you have to check these two boxes, allow HTTP traffic and allow HTTPS traffic. Basically that is all you have to do. Okay. And after that you can click on create. So 
GCP will take like five minutes to fire up your virtual machine. But I would like to tell you that you should wait for at least five minutes. And after that, launch a Jupyter Notebook session using our external IP. As you can see, virtual machine is created as of now. This Python demo is up. You can go to this bell icon on top, right? And you can see create VM instance of Python demo and it's boot disk Python demo is done. This bell icon reminds me of a good time to remind you guys that please hit that bell icon and subscribe to my channel to get all the notifications about the series of videos I'll be posting related to coding on iPad Pro or iPad Pro programming. So please stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. So once that is created, the thing that I was telling you about waiting for a few minutes is that when you click on this external IP, you will notice that it is not working. We have to change the HTTPS connection to HTTP and try again still you will see that it is not working because behind the scenes although this virtual machine is up all the connections and networking is not up already so it will still take some time to do that so after waiting for like five to seven minutes we will fast forward this video and we'll try to click on external ip again let's look at the time first on your left top you'll see that it is 4 14 pm we kind of started this virtual machine around 4 p.m. So it took around 15 minutes to start your virtual machine. Now we are going to click on this external IP that you see on the screen. So when we click on that IP, you will see that nothing is happening, but stay with me. As you can see, this path is going to your HTTP S port, but we want to redirect it to HTTP port. So once you remove that S out of HTTPS and click enter. Voila! You'll see that your Jupyter IO is running now and you can run most of the programming languages and perform coding experiments. So let's start with uh, Python first of all. So what you have to do is you just have to go to this new, click on that. As you can see, you have C++, 11, 14, these are different versions and then you have Java. You have Python 2, 3, R, R, Juniper as well. So let's say we want to run Python 3. So it will create a new file for you. Let's start with the most simple thing, which is 2 plus 2. And just click this run. So as you can see, Python is running. Compiler is running behind the scenes and it is able to give you the answer. So let's give a variable some like a equals to nine value. Uh, opening parenthesis, you will put double quotes. Opening parenthesis and let's say you want to say hello world, which is like the first line of code in every programming language. So we will print that. So let's do that now and we will run it you'll click on run as you can see it is printing hello world now you want to print the variable a so you'll type print open parenthesis a and close parenthesis and you will run it you'll get the value of a so this is how you can run python in your ipad and use your ipad for coding if you don't want to spend money or if you don't have a laptop so similarly you can perform very high level data science programming as well here because this is Jupyter you will be able to involve NumPy and pandas libraries and you will be able to program and code for your data science experiments as well so in the next series we'll look at how you can do that one on your ipad pro so for now we are able to run python in Jupyter on your ipad pro so this was just an experiment showing you the capability of your iPad. So again, to make everything clear, we are not running Python on your iPad directly on the kernel because you don't, you are not exposed to the iPad kernel. What you're trying to do is you're using your iPad as a user interface 
for the machine that you have created, virtual machine that you have created on Google Cloud. So everything you're doing here is actually running on Google Cloud with the memory and etc. And it is totally free for you unless you start clicking some buttons here and there that might cost you money. But most of in my experiment, you don't have to worry about that as long as you are sticking to what you want to do, like coding, programming, that is not going to be an issue. So we will stop this session here because after this, we'll be running some advanced level Python programming and I don't want to feed a lot of information in one video. So this is the basic stuff of how you can actually run Python on your iPad without any issues and run basic Python commands on your iPad Pro for absolutely free without any cost. In the next series of the videos, I will be showing you how you can run advanced Python related code on your iPad Pro using the libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Scikit. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, then you absolutely cannot afford to miss my next video. So for that, I would recommend subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications when I post that video. And also, if you learned something today, please hit that like button. It really helps a lot. And like always, see you in the next one. Don't forget to exercise today.